going on collectors? This is Parlay J here with you today. And on today's video, we're gonna take you through my 100 card submission to PSA. Last one for 2019, obviously. Uh, and the last one before we get the uh, PSA price hike on grading. And I'm really excited about this. This is technically my second submission. My first one was kind of a, a paltry submission. Uh, some of the cards actually that are uh, in the background before you were cards that I had in my collection loose. I had purchased them or gotten them uh, way before I knew what grading even was. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go through the process just to see what it was like. So it was definitely an interesting thing. Um, I bundled it together with um, my buddy Silver Jackify, and we did one big submission. Obviously, he, uh, I think we did a 100 card submission together, and I think I accounted for like all of eight cards in it. So the stack here in front of you is the 100 cards that I'm going to submit to PSA. Again, along with my buddy Silver Jackify, we're gonna do a pretty big submission. So I wanted to kind of do a before and after video and take you through what I'm sending into PSA now. It's a it's funny because as I picked out the cards, I thought I had more vintage than I really ended up with. Um, I'd say the vast majority of this is between like 2011 and 2019. So um, we're going to go through them right now. So I'm going to move this stack out of the way. And so the very first two cards uh, it is two of the 2005 Justin Verlander Topps Rookie. So I actually picked up both of these cards during his, was it a no-hitter or a perfect game? I think it was during uh, his no-hitter in 2019. Uh, kind of fully expecting that by the end of that no-hitter and the next day, these things were going to pop pretty heavy. So I went out and I picked up some Verlander cards. I didn't have any of his rookies in my collection. And so the condition looks really, really good on both of them. The centering looks really nice. The corners on both of them are very nice, very sharp, um, front and back. So ignore the stickers on here. Um, I've got a lot of old cases that I'm sending in. And by the way, the whole thing about when you send in cases and you don't get them back from PSA, sheesh. I kind of want to keep my cases, but it's okay. I'm going to start with some new cases. But uh, here's the first two of the sub. So that's the Verlander tops. So now, and I've got them in, in year order to some extent. There is, I was reading a lot about strategy for submitting to PSA, where you want to intentionally almost stagger your cards that are modern with your cards that are a little bit older just because the modern cards are much more likely to get a, you know, nine or a 10 and the older ones are really, really hard to get, you know, even above like a six or a seven typically. So I did read that there is a strategy where you want to stagger them out because graders may want to see some tens before they see some older ones. Um, so that they can like get a sense of what they graded a 10 and then when the older one comes across, maybe they're not as harsh. I am kind of just going to go with your order and you'll see the way I laid these out was most of my submission are tops. So I started from 2000s, uh, 2005 forward leading up to 2019 and then I shifted, I think I went to Bowman after that. And then rounding it out, I went more vintage with most of the vintage cards. So you'll see how that one kind of works out. So the next one is this Freddie Freeman. It's 2011 tops. Another one that's in really good condition to the eye. I think the centering looks really good. Um, corners look really nice and sharp. Centering on front and back, pretty, pretty good. So I gotta get the Freddie Freeman in there. We've got the Paul Goldschmidt rookie. This is another, next couple are gonna be 2011. So this particular one, I actually purchased off Amazon. So it was interesting. I wanted to test a variety of markets beyond just eBay. And so a lot of the cards I did get on eBay, 
Um, but there were cards that I got on Amazon, OfferUp, LetGo, and Facebook Marketplace. So this was one of, I believe, two that I have in this submission that was off of Amazon. And not too bad. The card looks good. The condition looks good. The corners look really, really sharp. It looked like down in this bottom left corner, there may be a little weirdness going on, but I think this has a good shot at a 10. And the Goldschmidt rookie, the drop off from 10 to nine is actually pretty <laughs> impressive in price. So I'm hoping that this one lands a 10 for Goldie and that he, um, he comes back you know, stronger in his next season in 2020 with St. Louis. So keeping with the same set, we've got the JD Martinez rookie. So this is another one from this very coveted set. I did target picking up these rookies out of this set. Um, so this JD, again, looks pretty good to me. Centering, corners, front and back. Pretty good, pretty good. Continuing on, the Anthony Rizzo rookie in the same top set. Another one where the corners looking good. The centering, I think, looks pretty good. And, you know, obviously this is the untrained eye here. So this is, uh, we'll see how it shakes out. So here we have a Mike Moustakis rookie from the same set. It looks like the centering's a little off on this one. It looks like it kind of pairs to the left a bit more. So I don't expect this to end up with a 10. Let's see. Um, I'm going to guess maybe an 8 or a 7. But i um, happy to add the Moustakis to my collection. And again, wanted to get all these key rookies from this particular set. Next up is the Charlie Blackman. So I do have a Blackman that I purchased uh, early in the summer. And what I didn't realize was there was actually a, it looks like an ink mark on it. So it got like a six and a half, I think. So I was kind of disappointed with that. So I went out and I got myself another Blackman Loose and hoping that I could pull off a, a 10. Although I do think the centering on this one is a little bit off again, a little bit more to the left. So I'm figuring it'll probably end up with an eight or a nine. The back looks centered a bit better than the front. Next. I've got three Chris Sales that I got from multiple different places. Uh, if I remember right, I got two of them from OfferUp in a package deal. And OfferUp's actually a really good spot where you can get loose cards. You find dealers that are on there that uh, sell mostly loose cards. And if you buy in bulk, you can really get a pretty good deal on it. So um, I do have... I think two sales in my collection. One is a PSA, but I think it ended up in eight, if I remember right. And another was actually graded by GMA. And so that was a 10, but uh, I didn't want to crack the case and send it in. So I got these at a pretty good deal. I think I got these for about four bucks each. And so I'm going to see how they go. For the most part, all three look pretty good. I think the one on the left and the one on the right look the best. The This one in the center, again, looks a little bit shifted to the left centering wise. So I think at least one of these I have a shot at a 10 and the others probably maybe eights or nines. All right, so um, now tops Chrome, Freddie Freeman. So we had the regular Topps Freddy. I think this one should likely come out of 10. This is a nice looking card, Freddie Freeman. So now we're gonna go to 2012. So this is the Topps 2012 Mike Trout second year card. I actually pulled this from a break that I did when I got the 2012 Topps um, box that we did a video for and I will link it here if you did not see it but this is a pretty cool poll and I was excited uh, I have a couple of Mike Trout rookies and I'm really pumped to add the second year to my collection I know, you know obviously rookies are more desirable but this is the kind of guy where 
you know, it's kind of like Mantle. You, you don't mind having his card in any year at all. And this one looks really nice. So I think there's a shot at this coming back at 10. Next one is the Bryce Harper. And speaking of other videos, so I did do another video on is this the time to buy Bryce Harper rookie cards cheap? Um, and I will link it here as well. I don't think I will get a 10 on this. I think the, is it the bottom left? Yeah, I think in the bottom left corner, there was a little bit of a ding ever so slightly. So other than that, the centering looks uh, good. It kind of looks a little crooked, but that may just be me. So um, I do have another Bryce, uh, a couple Bryce Harpers that are graded already. And so I wanted to add the leg up to the collection and hold on to that. Definitely to flip um, if he does have a good season coming up. So we got Harper in there. Next one also from this set is the Dallas Keuchel rookie. This one looks pretty good to me. I think um, this has a really good shot at a PSA 10. Um, you know, they say you don't want to grade too heavy on pitchers and really batters are the ones that you want to focus on. And I totally buy that. Some of these cards though, I, like I said, I went after the, the key rookies and some of the major sets, uh, like the 2011 and 2012. And so specifically this Keuchel, um, I wanted to include it in the collection. So I'm going to send that out to PSA too. Next up, we have the U Darvish rookie from the same set. I had uh, three or four of these Darvish rookies, but this was actually one of his short prints. So I'm sending this one out to PSA um, and not the others just to, to stay within the 100 because <laughs> grading 100 card gets pretty pricey. So pretty excited to see how this one comes back. I think the centering on the back of this one looks a little bit off. It looks like the top's a bit bigger than the bottom, but we'll see there. Um, next, I have the Topps Chrome Jose Fernandez Auto. And I think I will probably do a video on this. I'm really surprised at the valuation of Jose Fernandez rookie cards. You know, he, I mean, he was undeniably an incredibly solid player, even though you know, his career was tragically cut short. Um, but in the years he did play, and it's a shame he was on the Marlins because he probably would have gotten more notoriety if he was on almost any other team. But if you look at Jose Fernandez cards now on, on even eBay, the value is so low. Um, so I actually went out and I bought probably almost every variation of the Topps Chrome and the Topps Rookie cards. Um, short prints, the parallels, and I picked up this auto, which I thought was really nice. I think the most expensive one that I picked up was this auto and I got it for, I think it was between 10 and 12 or $14. So I was pretty happy to have these cards. And at some point I would like to grade all of them, but I, I wanted to just include this one first and foremost in this run. Uh, next we have the Marcel Ozuna tops rookie. So another one that I think is in very fine condition, it looks like the centering is a little bit off to the left. So probably won't come back a 10. I'm hoping maybe a nine, um, possibly an eight. But Ozuno is kind of one of the borderline cards in this set. But again, part of this, you know, these uh, set of rookies, 11, 12, 13, that I wanted to get graded and have in the collection. Next up, Anthony Rendon. So as I make this video, he is still unsigned and he has been a hot topic of conversation this off season. He had a great year in 2019 with the world champion Nats. And I had picked up this card about two months prior to the World Series ending. And um, just with his play, you know, I think there's a, a great chance that depending on what team he goes to and what kind of contract he gets, this card graded, if this could pull off a 10, which I think it might have a shot, um, would be a pretty sweet addition. I had tried to pull in a parallel, the Walmart blue of Anthony Rendon, but 
uh, wasn't able to, to pull that off. So I'm gonna go with the base card here for this run. So two cards, uh, well, two of the same card, but I am big on Christian Yellick rookies. So if you ask my buddy Silver Jackify, he's probably sick of hearing me talk about uh, Yellick, but I went on a Christian Yellick buying spree over the course of after his injury in 2019 until after the World Series and, and even into now. We saw the value of his card tank after the injury, which is to be expected to a certain extent. Uh, he, we thought he was, if he was healthy, that he was really gonna have a shot at the MVP, which would have really bumped up the value of his cards. His card really climbed prior to the injury. It uh, topped out on eBay. They were selling for, I think the highest I saw it was maybe around 150 for a PSA 10 of this base card. And now it's down back to like 75, 80, 90 territory. So I went out and not only did I, you know, try to buy up as many PSA 10s as I could, but I also tried to pick up loose cards that I can send on this grading run. So I think I have a shot with um, both of these at possibly pulling some PSA 10s, although the population for these Yellicks are really, really high, which kind of goes against, um, you know, the, the thinking of Yellick being a good buy, even if he's cheap, because obviously when you have a population so high, it could do a little damage to your card if you're looking to flip. But I, to me, Yellick is sort of like on the Mike Trout path and uh, he's just become a perennial all around five tool guy. And if he comes back strong again off this injury, then I think in 2020, there's gonna be real room for Yellick's value to go back up. So I'm riding that boat and I'm gonna send these out to PSA. Um, for example, I also went out and tried to pick up some of the parallels. So some of the Yellick parallels are this uh, emerald green and the Walmart blue are big ones. And obviously the black is a biggie, but that is pretty expensive. So I was able to score this emerald, which I definitely think this has an opportunity to be a PSA 10. I think the centering left to right may be a little bit off, um, but I think it's got a really good chance of being a PSA 10. Looking at the back, the centering does look a little bit off um, and even top to bottom, maybe slightly. So we'll see, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. This is one of the cards that I'm really hoping comes back as a 10 and we shall see. Actually, um, this next one is the Mike Trout Emerald from the same year. And I got these as a lot on an eBay auction um, I did pay a bit heavier than I wanted to, um, although I did really want to add that Yellick Emerald to my collection. So I got both of these, I believe it was for 90 or $100 uh, together. So we'll see how I pan out with that. And so for that reason, I also want to send this trout and get it graded. I think this one has a really good shot as coming back as a 10 as well. Centering looks nice, the corners are all really, really uh, clean and we will see. So rounding out the Yellick conversation, here's the Walmart blue Christian Yellick and another one that I, I really think and hope has a chance coming back at a 10. So I'm keeping a real close eye on all these Yellicks and I was really excited to add these to my collection. I had been eyeing them for months, waiting for the right auction. Um, to kind of snatch and you really have to snipe these types of cards when you're doing eBay auctions. So um, again, another, another video that I'll do on, on how to bid on cards on eBay, there's really a strategy to it, but you have to be in it to win it and you have to be very firm on what your budget is. So next up, we actually have these two um, Tanaka rookie cards and these are from the 2014 set. So we've got um, the, you know, uh, gosh, I want to say up and down, the vertical and the horizontal, for lack of a better word, um, Tanaka on the right, uh, the vertical and the horizontal Tanaka on the left, the MLB debut. So 
got both of these. I was kind of up against whether or not I want to send both of these, but I think being, um, I think Yankee fans, if you try to sell cards to Yankee fans, there's more value in it. So I think um, if I can get these back as a 10 and flip these, there is some room to make a couple of dollars um, off of Tanaka uh, in 2020. So the next card is the Mookie Betts rookie debut top. So this is his rookie card. Um, the horizontal view. This is a really nice pick, I think. Pretty unusual for a rookie card, but I really like it. I think the condition is really, really good. The corners and the centering looks very intact. So hoping I have a good chance on a 10 on that. The Xander Bogarts, uh, no sparkle version of his rookie card. This is another one that is in pretty good condition. I think I have a really good shot at a 10 on this. And we'll see how PSA goes through this whole stack early on um, to see if you know a lot of 10s come early. And I'm, I'm hoping they don't bell curve it by giving away all the 10s early and then kind of screwing me over in the back end where I have some of the vintage cards where I'm hoping to get as high a grade as possible. So we shall see. Uh, it was interesting with this Bogarts. I was I found a um, sparkle on ball, a loose card on eBay that I really, really went in till the very end. And I thought I was going to snag it, but last minute it got sniped away from me. I think it ended up selling for about $70, which is kind of high um, for a loose card. So it is what it is. But that would have been a really nice pull because the sparkle on ball version of this is very rare, um, especially PSA grading wise. But for this base, we'll see how it goes. Next is the George Springer rookie. So I tried to load up on Astros leading into the playoffs just on the uh, chance that you know one of them becomes a hero or the Strohs win the World Series. So Springer was one of the guys that I added to the collection. And this card came out you know, real nice. I really like the quality of it. Um, I think I pulled this for about $3. So if we can you know, pull a 10 on this, I think that will really exponentially raise the value, especially if Springer has a, another pretty solid year um, in 2020. Next up and last from this set is Garrett Cole, Future Stars rookie card. So as you know, I always make mention, I am a Pittsburgh Pirates fan, certainly in the minority. But as we speak on this day, Garrett Cole is still unsigned, but during the winter meetings, he is the talk of the town and we're just waiting to see how much money he registers. It's not a question of if, it's when he gets you know, possibly a record setting contract. And so I'm pretty excited to see what that does for the value of his card. Um, I think I've got a shot at this being a 10. So I'm really looking forward to that. Even if the value pops, uh, being a Pirates fan, I don't know, I, I may not be so quick to flip this one, but we shall see. All right, now we are going to go down to the 2015 Topps cards that I have in this grading run. So we've got the Carlos Correa rookie. I don't think this is gonna get a 10. There is definitely kind of a ding on the bottom left here, as you can see. Um, so I'm hoping maybe we can pull an eight or even a nine if the graders get on a good run. I, I'm a little disappointed because I have another Correa, it graded out as a nine. And so I really wanted to try to get the 10, but I, unless I get some stroke of luck, the, I won't be getting it with this one. Next up is Chris Bryant. And I think this is another one that's got a little ding in the bottom left corner. I'm not having luck with the bottom left corners of these cards, but um, centering looks pretty good. Um, was pumped to get a Chris Bryant added to the collection. This is another set in tops that I really like. There's some really good rookies in this set. And right now, Bryant is the, you know, the talk of while Anthony Rendon is not signed, could he actually be traded as the Nationals are kind of looking into it? So Bryant is going to go and be sent out. And I think we're almost halfway through, maybe not slightly under halfway through, this, uh, the next card is uh, Francisco Lindor's rookie. So he's another guy who some people are big on going into next season just because he sort of had a little bit of an off year last season. 
So I definitely wanted to pick up this card, grade it out. Um, think I have a shot at a 10 on this. Next is Wilson Contreras in the 2016 top set. So I, again, not sure that this one is gonna really be 2010, uh, excuse me, um, PSA 10. There's some reflection here from the sleeve, but there's a little bit of a ding in the bottom left corner. Um, and so we'll see, it's really, really slight. Other than that, might have a shot at a 10 on this, but not holding my breath. And keeping with the theme of catchers in this set, Gary Sanchez, again, uh, as a you know New Yorker, um, I like to get the key Yankee rookie cards graded and their value is a bit higher in the market um, in New York. And this one I also don't expect to be a 10, keeping with the theme, looks like there is a little bit of a ding in the bottom left corner. Let's see if we can get close up there, yeah. Um, so there's some action going on down there, but we'll see how that comes back. And keeping with the Yankee theme, but this will be the only card from the 2017 set that I'm submitting, and it is um, the Aaron Judge rookie. So there's a couple of different variations of the Judge rookie, and that scotch tape is over the holder, not the card. Um, the card looks like it's in pretty good shape. I think on the top right, there's a little bit of a rough edge here. Very hard to see but um, I'm holding out that I can hopefully pull a nine or a 10 on this. I'm probably being really optimistic with all the cards, uh, modern cards that I'm saying I think I can get a nine, a nine or a 10, but um, we'll see on the uh, return video when I get them back graded. Next up is Shane Bieber. So had a great year. Um, this 2018 Topps rookie of his base card. This was another one that the second one that I got off Amazon for two dollars and twenty five cents plus shipping. Um, I think I had to actually pay. So the Bieber looks really nice. Um, having gotten it off Amazon, I was a little concerned because sometimes the picture isn't always the actual card; it's stock. But this came back nice. So submitting that out to PSA. So looking at 2018, um, I picked up a Reese Hoskins rookie. So this probably wasn't one of my better buys. Um, they were selling PSA 10s for you know between 20 and 30 bucks during the season. That's when I was looking at this card and Hoskins was hitting the ball pretty well. I went out and I bought a loose card. I think I picked this one up for either eight or 10, eight to $12, somewhere around there. So we'll see how this one runs. Next is the Jack Flaherty rookie. So this is another pretty nice card, another great prospect. Um, had a really good year last year. He really came into his own. So excited to send that away to be graded. Um, on the topic of pitchers, we have the Walker Bueller from the same year rookie card. So any Walker Bueller card, um, I'm definitely looking to get that graded. He is a, I, in my opinion, a star in the making. Uh, this card has a couple of little rough spots around the edges. So I think it'll probably grade out maybe an eight or a nine, considering that most of these are probably tens out there. So still taking a shot on it. Um, the Ronald Acuna rookie card. So this is his base card. Um, I wanted to at least get one of these from the update series out uh, into my collection. So I picked this up off of an eBay auction for around $20. And depending on how it grades out, as if you've been paying attention to the Acuna rookies, uh, these really popped big time. It's hard to think that they could go higher than they did in 2019, but nonetheless, I definitely uh, am happy to add it to my collection, whether I'm you know late and missed the boat or not, but I wanna get it graded. So maybe this is one that we could flip um, that's definitely something that I'm into flipping. All right, so next up from the 2018 top set um, is a guy that I am also really big on, kind of like with uh, the Christian Yelix uh, headed into the 2020 season. So Gleber Torres, um, here's two cards with you know the same pose essentially, but one is his tops update and one is his series two. And it's interesting how it's the same picture, same pose, but the um, picture quality looks very different on the right. It looks a lot brighter and crisper. And on the left, 
looks like a lot um, darker and a bit blurrier. Um, you can see the biggest differences between the two, the Rookie Emblem and the Topps logo on different sides. But these are two cards that I was really excited to add to the collection um, to be able to send out to PSA for grading. I think they both have a shot at a PSA 10, and I'm really, really high on Gleber going in. So Didi Gregorius being, you know, as of this video, out of the picture in New York, he's moved on to Philly. Shortstop is basically Gleber's for the rest of his career if he can keep up the play, which I firmly believe that he will. Um, so uh, for that reason, again, I'm really high on Gleber and also in the New York market, I think his card values have a really good chance to soar. Um, and so here is some more Gleber cards that I also picked up. So these are probably his most desirable rookies. These are the, the short prints or the most desirable short prints. Um, I picked up both of these on eBay. I think I got one for around 50 or 55 and the other for around 60. These graded out in a PSA 10, you know, could go for one to two hundred dollars or so. Um, so I think both of them have a really good shot at a PSA 10. It's hard to tell centering wise with these cards just because there's no frame. But um, I think actually the, the card on the right may, if anything, be a little bit crisper on the corners than the left, although I think they're both very close. The left, I think, may have a little bit of a tiny ding on the top left. So we'll see how these come back, but I'm really keeping my fingers crossed for a bunch of 10s on Gleber. Um, another guy who I am big on sending as many cards out as possible heading into the season is this man, Pete Alonzo. So if you saw my break on the 2019 tops or a couple of the breaks that I did on 2019 tops, I pulled both of these Alonzos straight out of the pack and they went straight into the top holder and they're going straight out to PSA. Um, so if Alonzo can follow up this campaign with another solid showing next year, I think his cards really have a high, high ceiling, quite obviously similar to Acuna last season. So I, for that reason, I'm sending these straight out to PSA. Um, another variation of Alonzo that I pulled out of the pack is his throwback 35 year stamp, uh, rookie card. So that is also getting, uh, going on the PSA grading run. And this is his uh, latest card, also a rookie from the update series, Pete Alonzo. Very different pose, probably the least valuable if it gets graded high. But nonetheless, I'm sending all of my key Alonzos out and I have another one coming up, um, which is actually the last card in this um, submission. Just kind of threw that on there, even though I'm doing them chronologically. The next guy here, Kyle Tucker, is another one that I'm pretty big on. So I've got the Topps uh, base. This was from the Series 1 set, which I think is one of the better rookie cards from the Series 1 set, and the Topps Chrome. Again, I think uh, the Chrome has a really good chance of getting a 10. The base, I think I have a very tiny mar on the top right corner here, so may keep it from getting a 10. Um, but Tucker is one of those guys that he, when he was given the chance in 2019, he really did perform well. It was a really crowded outfield, really crowded infield too, really crowded lineup for those Astros. And now the rumor is, you know, Carlos Correa potentially being on the market, they're thinking about shedding a little payroll. So if that was to happen, I think Tucker will really be in line to get a shot to prove himself and try to bring those um, the value of his cards up next year. So I'm sending those out. Uh, we've got the Ronald Acuna Topps Chrome Rookie Cup. So any Acuna that I get, I am most definitely sending out, hoping that I can capitalize and not be too late on his run up in value. We shall see. Uh, same for Juan Soto. This is his Rookie Cup card that I pulled straight from the pack. Um, not sure if I'm gonna get a, a 10 on this. I think it looks pretty good. But um, still, nonetheless, I'm sending all of my Sotos out. Um, so here are two Eloy Jimenez cards. So pulled one of these from a pack and bought the other one at a dealer in Minnesota, actually, for a dollar. I couldn't pass that up, even though they are, you know, in pretty good production rookie cards from this set. 
um, but still want to send these out on the chance that Eloy does have a solid blow up year next year. So any of these types of cards, I think the left card has a good chance at a 10. The right card, I've got, it looks like a very little ding in the top right. So probably won't be a 10. Probably shouldn't even waste my time sending this out because um, it'll probably come back an eight or a nine, but I'm going to take a shot and hope that PSA just hands out tens on these modern cards anyway. Speaking of modern cards, this is the Vlad Guerrero. So I think this is the only one that I have in the run. I had a couple more. Um, I had a Bowman that I didn't include in here just because I didn't want to go over the hundred. Um, I probably should incrementally just to get it graded. We'll see if I make the decision the next couple minutes to add anything to my 100 card run and make it 105 or 10 card run. Um, but this is the Vlad um, base card, so I will be sending that out. Um, next, we've got the Carter Keyboom rookie. Um, two of them, actually. Ooh, I forgot that I had two here. So that puts me at 101. So I may strip out one or replace this with another Vlad and just hang on to the key boom card um, late in the game. We'll see. I don't want to deviate after doing this video, but I might since I forgot that there's two in here. Um, so we'll see the decision on that. Uh, next is an Austin Riley rookie card in gold. So pulled this straight from the pack of the update series. And this is numbered to uh, 843 of 2019. So we'll be sending that out. These are two cards that I picked up off eBay together. And I got them, I think, for $4 each. And I'm not a fan of the Tops Now set. But um, our Aristides Aquino, who, if you remember, was setting records for when he got called up and I think was the fastest rookie to get to 10 home runs. I think he ended up with like nine home runs in his first 12 games or something crazy. I can't remember exactly, but I immediately went out um, as he was about three or four homers into that streak and he was snatched up in all my fantasy leagues right away. And I wanted to get whatever cards were out there on the market of his. So I grabbed these tops now and I think in the 2020 top series one set, we will likely see his first base tops rookie card, um, which I'm sure will be, you know, highly coveted. So sending these out again, not a big proponent of tops now, but I do want to send this out. Um, moving on to Bowman, but staying with the Aquino theme, I picked up this uh, Bowman Chrome Auto of Aquino, which I think is a really nice card and it's in really good condition. Um, the Bowman Chromes are pretty easy to get a, a good grade on. So um, I definitely want to send this out on the chance that, you know, he, he continues well, on the premise that he continues his hot hitting into next year and doesn't go into a sophomore slump. So this one was a bit pricey. I think I ended up spending about 40 or 50 on that one, but taking the chance on it and definitely grading it. Next is the Michael Kopech. Uh, Bowman Chrome Rookie <clears throat> Auto. So he's another guy who I suspect could have a real breakout year next year with the White Sox. So I wanted to invest in at least one of his key cards. So I picked up this Bowman Chrome Auto of his. This was a really nice find that I was really happy to get. So this is a JD Martinez Bowman Auto. I ended up picking this up loose for eight to ten dollars about and the condition looks insane so i was really happy to get this card really looking forward to see if this comes back as a 10 and so that will be getting sent out all right so the next three <laughs> um come from my um <laughs> bowman chrome auto uh, box break that Silver Jackify and I did in Minnesota. <laughs> we had no idea what we were walking into. We didn't realize that we just basically dropped $150 on a, a box that had three cards in it, and uh, all of which were got pictures and no names that to us anyway. So hopefully I can look back at this video in a couple of years and say, I called Durbin Feltman a no name when I really shouldn't have. But nonetheless, I'm gonna send these out for grading. Um, this is a uh, 
I guess blue, I don't know, blue it looks like, not purple. Auto, Durbin Feltman, uh, numbered to 150. This is 136, so gonna send that out. Uh, shout outs to Silver Jackify on the next three here. This will probably bring back pretty harsh memories. Uh, that video that we did when I first made my YouTube debut on his channel, <laughs> um, it, was a, it was a tough one. We had a really cool break um prior to that but then this wasn't so exciting so the next one is a zach brown auto bowman chrome as well and lastly is the uh, francisco morales bowman chrome auto so we'll be sending that out on the topic of silver jackify so before i got back into collecting silver jackify has a habit of sending <laughs> which is pretty awesome uh cards to to his friends for their birthday and as a pirates fan uh he sent me this bowman chrome or bowman auto uh of andrew mccutcheon um probably really not worth too much anymore because he's had a pretty decent fall from grace but i really liked this card and uh big thanks to silver jackify sending this one out to me and i will honor that by sending it out to PSA and hopefully pulling a 10 on it. Uh, staying with the Bowman Chrome theme, we have a Gavin Lux um, purple. This is numbered to 250 and it's number 66. So Gavin Lux, that's a nice card, nice prospect. Um, love these Chrome cards. So we'll be sending that out. I think that should be a pretty solid 10. Um, next is the Joe Adele Chrome uh, Green, numbered to 99. This is 20 of 99. Another one that I think can pull a 10 pretty easily. Um, another Bowman Green, numbered to 99. This is 49, and this is Fernando Tatis Jr. Another one in good shape. Um, Bowman Paper, this is a Juan Soto. So we'll be sending this one out. So I lied before saying that that was my only Soto. Um, I will be shooting this Soto out. Uh, next is the Bowman Paper Carter Key Boom Rookie. So another one that I will be sending out. We have a Bowman uh, Prospect Paper Shane Bieber Rookie. Uh, we have the Bowman Platinum uh, Jose Fernandez Rookie. Another Bowman Platinum Trevor Story rookie. And all of these, I think, pretty good shot at a 10. Uh, Bowman's shiny cards, Platinum, Chrome. Uh, good chance of getting great at a 10. This is the Bowman uh, Nolan Arenado rookie. So pretty excited to send this out and see if I can pull back a 10 on this. Um, this is his 2013 rookie card. So we'll see how we do there. And that kind of wraps it up for the modern era. Now we're gonna go sort of toward the <laughs> junk, junk era a bit, um, which I think technically probably ended in 92 or 93, but you can never call this man junk. So this Derek Jeter um, rookie, this is the most affordable, I would say, rookie card. So I picked this up during the season um, and really excited to send this out and see how this grades out. I think it's got a good shot at a 10. The centering looks a little bit off, so I'm expecting an eight or a nine. Uh, this is a throwaway grading card. Tino Martinez, upper deck rookie. Uh, I'm just obsessed with Tino Martinez since I was a, a kid, and I just want this in the slab. And I think it actually might have a good chance of getting a nine or a 10. It's in really good condition, so I'm sending that one out. Um, the 87 tops, Barry Bonds. So that is another one that I pulled from my very old collection and going to send that out. I think I have a shot at that being an eight, maybe seven, eight. Uh, I got a couple Chipper Jones. So this is his Donruss rated rookie. Another one that looks like it's in pretty good shape. So excited to see what the grade comes back on that. We got the Chipper Jones upper deck rookie card, top prospect. Another one that looks in pretty good shape. And lastly, on the chipper trail, we've got the Topps uh, 40th anniversary, 40 years, number one draft pick rookie card. 
So we're gonna go chipper. And here I picked this up on eBay, really cheap. This was about two bucks and it was the Larry Walker Leaf rookie card. Um, the centering looked pretty good and the corners looked really good. So I grabbed it in anticipation of him potentially getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, if I can get this graded um, and hang on to this in time for the announcement, if he is um, uh, anointed as in the Hall of Fame, I'm pretty excited to see if I can flip that card. Next, so this is the Cal Ripken Jr. rookie that I pulled um, with Silver Jackify uh, during our 1982 box break. Clearly won't be a 10. The centering is definitely way off. I'm hoping I can pull a seven on this, um, but probably more toward, I would say a six um, or maybe even a five, just because the centering's way off on the front. The back, it's a little bit better, but still off. It's fresh from the pack, so the corners are good. Um, the top edge looks a little bit rough, so I'm hoping it can get a seven, maybe even a little bit higher if we're lucky. The next two are the 1972 Topps Carlton Fisk, uh, which is part of the Rookie Stars card. So I went and picked up some of these Fisk cards because I was on a catcher run to try to get some of the uh, uh, vintage catchers of our time. Um, none of these cards are, are going to come close to a 10. Centering is off. Uh, corners are a little bit rough on the right one. I think the left one has the best shot of having a decent grade, even though the centering is more off than the right. I'm expecting probably in the neighborhood of like a four or a five across these two. So we'll see how these come back. This one is just in a really shoddy holder. <laughs> um, the card looks a lot better than it, it portrays during this through this holder. So this is the Tim Raines um, rookie card. This is from the 1981 top series. And so Tim Raines, Hall of Famer. Um, this has been in my collection for a while and I just, I wanna get this slabbed and see if there's a shot possibly at coming in at, you know, maybe a seven or, or maybe even an eight, um, probably more towards six or seven, I would say. Next on my catcher run is the Thurman Munson 1970 Tops Rookie Stars. So this one is definitely off centered, left to right and top to bottom but the corners look really good. Um, so I'm hoping it's not, it doesn't come back as a miscut because the back also looks pretty off and crooked. Um, but I got this one and really pumped to get this one in the slab. I am hoping I can pull off a seven. I think it will probably come back a four or a five. And if it's a miscut, I think it'll probably be a high miscut, probably an eight or a nine um, with the, the modifier, although I'm hoping there is no modifier. Um, next is this Bill Mazeroski 71 Tops. Um, so I had some luck sending out a Mazeroski rookie, um, the 70 rookie card in my first run with Silver Jackify, and it came back a seven, and I really thought it was gonna be maybe a four or five at best. This card, I think, has zero shot at coming anywhere close to that. I think it'll probably grade out as like a two or a three. Um, the edges are really rough. Um, I may pull, pull this one out, but um, being a Pirates fan, I, I do want to get some Pirates cards slabbed, and I do have the Mazeroski Rookie, so the second year would be a nice addition. Um, next, I have this Burt Blylevin Rookie. Um, bit rough around some of the edges. I totally expect this to come back as maybe like a four, um, maybe a five at best, but we will be sending that out. So this is the 19... Uh, what year is this? 1950, was this 57? It's not on the card. Um, no good for me forgetting what year this is, 57 or 59, um, Willie Mays. So I purchased this one off of um, Facebook Marketplace in a bundle deal for a couple vintage cards. And the centering is definitely off. Uh, the corners looked really good, so I wanted to grab it while I could. I think I got this one for about $12. 
Um, and it's the only Willie Mays card that I have in my collection. So absolutely sending that out to be graded. Um, the next two are cards that have been, since I was a teenager, I've always wanted the Ricky Henderson card. That was probably one of the most coveted cards along with the 85 tops, Mark McGuire USA team card at the time. And now I've got two of them. Uh, the one on the right actually has what looks like a pen mark right here, which really stinks. Um, that's probably going to take this way down to like a four or a three. The, the, unfortunately, the centering looked really good on this card, right to left. Top to bottom, it's still a bit off. Um, and the corners looked really pretty remarkable for, for this card. Um, so I don't think this is going to grade out all that well, but I'm still sending it. And then I think this Ricky will grade out a bit better, although I'm hesitant sending it out in the slab, but I really don't want to crack it because um, I don't want to disturb it because the corners look really good on this card and there's obviously no pen marks and the edges look smoother. So um, curious to see. And I, I'm also curious sending both of them out if maybe this one bumps up this one's grade. I think I got this one for $20 loose and I got the one that looks in better condition for about 40. Um, and I think I had pulled that in from like offer up. So uh, really looking forward to see where that comes back. All right, so the Reggie Jackson rookie. Um, so this is the 69 tops Reggie rookie. Now I sent this out in my first run and it came back as does not meet minimum size requirements and they would not slab it. I have heard that if you give it more than one go, you may get lucky. And what I'm also doing is I pulled in this Bobby Clemente um, card, who is also the only Roberto Clemente that I have in my collection. Um, and I'm sending it along with it because I'm hoping if they grade them back to back and they look at them layered over one another, they can see that it's the exact same size and that they're probably not both under minimum size requirements. So I'm gonna take my chances and see. So I'm gonna be really looking for this card probably first when I get this back to see if they grade it and if, if they do what it comes back at. Cause um, this card really could get a bump in value graded. The corners are okay on this. So if it does get graded, I'm kind of figuring it's probably gonna end up like a four. Um, would be pretty sweet if it was higher. This Clemente, um, it's got some marks on the left and it is off center and some of the corners are rough. So I would say this is probably gonna be in the neighborhood of a four as well. If it goes any higher than that, I will gladly take it. Um, next is the 1960 Karl Yastrzemski rookie. So this was a big one that I really always wanted to add to my collection. Um, don't think it's got any shot at grading much higher than maybe a six. If I get a six on this, I'd be pretty excited. If it goes higher, I'd be really excited. Um, but I'm really just happy to have this one in my collection, the Ostrimsky Rookie um, 1960 Tops. Um, and so actually, this is the, no, this isn't the same as the maze. So, We'll see how this one comes back. There's definitely some dings in the corner on the top left, the top right, um, and then the bottom right has a baby one. The left looks pretty good. From the back though, everything looks decent, um, but there are dings, so we'll see how that one comes back. I passed on this one my first go just because I was being way more selective, only sending like 10 cards or eight cards my first time. But I'm gonna get this Mattingly graded. I wanna see what it comes out to. I think it's in pretty good condition. The centering looks actually pretty good. Maybe it's a little far to the left. Um, but being a big Donnie baseball fan growing up and then a Tino Martinez fan after that um, and playing first base, I really am looking forward to getting a Mattingly in the slab. And then um, this is an interesting card. So I this was probably the first vintage card I ever got when I was a kid collecting. And I didn't even know who Hoyt Wilhelm was. Uh, <laughs> funny enough. But I've had this card probably, I'm going to say 25 years. Um, bought this in a card shop with my dad. 
um, the 61 tops Hoyt, and obviously the centering's way off. I suspect there's a chance it will come back under minimum size requirements. Um, I'm hoping not. It is way off. If anything, it may come back with a modifier of miscut, but I really just want to get this in the slab too because it's been in my collection so long, kind of has some meaning to me. So curious to see how this Hoyt Wilhelm comes back. And that's, that's some picture. Eyes closed, you know, posing for the camera. <laughs> Interesting. Um, second to last and last of the vintage is this um, finishing off my catcher theme is this Thurman Munson second year card. So this was another one that was always kind of in my um, in my crosshairs and it's the Topps Rookie Cup. So definitely this came in the case when I bought it. I'm going to just leave it in there rather than try to keep the case, even though, you know, would be nice to keep this for other cards. Um, but I, I want to send it in this one anyway. So the edges are definitely rough. The centering is off. I think there's another good chance this comes back as a miscut. Um, but nonetheless, we'll see how this grades and stacks up against the other Thurman rookie. And then just to throw PSA off, rounding it out is this um, Pete Alonzo um, Bowman Chrome ready for the show. I guess this is a purple um, or purple or blue. I don't know, being colorblind doesn't help here. Um, numbered to 250 that I pulled in a pack in the in my Bowman Chrome box break. So I, I looked this up and it really didn't have that much value, but since I'm sending all these Alonzos, I decided to send this one out as well um, and round out my 100. So that was a really, really long video. Um, had a lot of fun going through all those and, and kind of talking through some of the cards and some of the history and my um, my guesstimate for what those cards will grade at. And um, I'm really looking forward to when these do come back from PSA. And I'm interested to see how fast they come back from PSA since we're in winter. Um, I am guessing and hoping that it's quicker than it was in the summer, which was about a month and a half, two months. It was about six to eight weeks where the first run came back. So we shall see, and then I will most definitely do a follow-up video on what this uh, grading run turned out to be, um, and then compare to what I thought it would be. So um, thank you guys for sticking with me through this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, definitely leave me some comments on which cards you like the best. Tell me what you think about you know, which cards might grade better or worse. And tell me your thoughts on the strategy for getting PSA to grade cards better. What have you done? Um, leave me some comments and, and I wanna start the conversation on what your strategy is for kind of getting better grades with PSA. I'm totally not doing what I should be doing. I should probably be mixing these up more, but um, I'm just gonna stick with this order that, I, that I've got right now. Again, really happy to have shared this with you guys. Uh, more videos to come trying to get to those, you know, first hundred subscribers, which would be really cool and um, really pumped about it. So thanks again, guys. And until next time, this is Parlay J. Take care. Spike your hair. See you next time.